welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Welcome to the Catholic Mama, where you'll learn how to deepen and defend your faith, find comfort as we share the vocation of parenthood, and learn how to raise your children confidently Catholic. I'm your host, Christine Mooney Flynn. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to The Catholic Mama. I'm your host, Christine Mooney Flynn, and thanks for joining me today with Mariette Rintoul, who is the natural Catholic mom. Uh, she is a blogger and a fellow Instagram Catholic m- wife and mother. That's how I came across Mariette in the first place, was uh, just learning a lot from her Instagram. And I'm so happy that you can join me today. Hello, Mariette. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that was a very brief um, introduction. Can you please expand on who you are? For those sure. Um, so I am a devout Catholic um, wife and mother of two, and I live in Nebraska. Um, I grew up in Montana. Natural living was never on my radar at all, um, but I had a very weird interest in birth as a teenager, and as I got a little older and had mom friends who were having babies, um, this idea of natural birth really resonated with me, and then um, natural food kind of came from that, and it just kind of took over to where now I am this weird, crunchy, home birthing, cloth diapering (laughs) person, and um, it's a really big part of my life, but our family really thrives on it. And so it's just kind of become a passion of mine to share about and and to live with. So that's awesome. I I actually, my mom, we lived in Southern California for like four years when I was a kid. And that was the first time coming from the Northeast that my mother was introduced to natural type living. Okay. And so I was lucky enough to grow up with it. So even when I got away from it and and ate like crummy foods in college or whatever, I I had an idea of what to go back to. Okay. But a lot of it is completely um, consumed by kind of new age spirituality. So I'm Mm -hmm. excited that we get to talk about this today, that it's not just new age people who have, um, you know, who own natural living or crunchy lifestyle. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. They did call dibs on it. And it's not fair because (laughs) that's not the way it is. But I have to ask, wait, where in Nebraska are you? So right now we are in Lincoln, um, the capital. So And it's not super crunchy here. We kind of thought moving from Ohio to the Midwest, it was going to be really, really crunchy, but it is not. Um, <laughs> even though there is actually access to a lot of good food here, we have a ton of health food kind of stores. Um, I'm a little bit of a unicorn around here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, my, uh, a friend of mine is from Omaha, Nebraska, and just oh, moved nice. back there a couple months ago when we were talking about maybe the weather gets nicer. Uh, maybe going to see because I've heard great things about the Henry Dorley Zoo in Omaha. This is like the only thing I know about Nebraska. Yes. <laughs> we haven't been yet. We, it's expensive, but it's on our list next summer. We're going to okay. make a trip. How, how big of a drive is that from Lincoln? It's just an hour. We went oh, to Omaha oh, okay. for the Latin Mass Parish there last Sunday. It's oh, no far. kidding. Yeah. That's cool. So you have to drive a whole hour to get to one way? We, yes, but we have our own fraternity parish right here in Lincoln. We just wanted to go see some friends that were over there. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Like, I've heard of people who drive up to, you know, two and a half, three hours a, a Sunday round trip yeah. to get to a Latin Mass. So, yeah, I mean, no, I, that wouldn't be abnormal. Just... No, we, we, per, we moved ourselves within 10 minutes of a priestly fraternity of St. Peter Parish. So, we didn't That's have awesome. to do that. Um, so. Yeah, well, the only when we first got here, um, we just moved from the outside of Philadelphia area to Milwaukee. Okay. And um, there are a lot of Catholic parishes in this area, but they all, the ones that we were coming across seemed very contemporary, which is not okay. what we were looking for. And sure. the only Latin mass we thought for a while was, uh, I mean, it's not that far, it's like 20 minutes, but it's still, you have to go into the city of Milwaukee and it's okay. just coming from the suburbs. Yeah, it's just a hassle. And we just found like two months ago, it's only on Sunday afternoons at 2 p.m., which is great because you're not rushing out on a Sunday morning to go to mm-hmm. it, but they have a great Latin mass, and we've been so oh, excited to get to go. Our, our, the parish great. that we belong to, like, oh, we haven't seen you on Sundays. We're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. You make this one better, but the community isn't, and it always seems like this, and I don't know if this is your experience because you've been Catholic much longer than I have. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it seems like you either get community or you get orthodoxy, but you don't get both at the same parish. A lot well, of that's times. part of why we want to be part of a priestly fraternity of St. Peter Parish, because they usually are very good at both. I, we came here and we have had like more play dates and dinners with people and stuff than you can imagine. So it's something that the fraternity parishes seem to do really well. And so we're really grateful for that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good inside tip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, did you wind up having home births then? Yes, my first two were both born at home, really awesome midwives, Um, and uh, and it was something that I really wanted to do. Most of my friends back in Idaho, I had first moved to Idaho when I turned 18 for the Latin Mass Parish with the fraternity there, and I met all of these real crunchy moms, and most of them home birth. It's kind of almost the norm in that parish, and um, so yeah, so I kind of like went out on a limb, and I found a great um, home birth midwife team who, interestingly enough, were not Catholic and they are actually quite progressive and liberal, but they do a great job taking care of moms and helping low risk mothers birth at home. And uh, so, yeah, both were born at home and uh, they were great experiences. That's, that's really interesting. I have, I just had a home birth, but that was my fourth. So I've gotten progressively more trusting Sure. <laughs> in my own body and, and just the idea of being at home. Because when I, the first time I got pregnant, I was um, uh, definitely not prepared, for, <laughs> prepared mm-hmm. for it emotionally or mentally or anything mm-hmm. like that. So I just, and I didn't even have like a primary care doctor. So I was like, ah. so I yeah, <laughs> went yeah. to the nearest. So I was like, who, a friend of mine had just given birth. I was like, who's your OB? Okay. That's, you know, sure, sure. that's where I'm going to go. And, um, and I, I was just kind of uh, disenchanted with the mm-hmm. hospital birthing experience. And so then went to a birth center for the next two and wound up actually home birthing. I toyed with the idea, uh, but we, um, oh, and then I left a job that I had really great health insurance for and didn't have oh. that. So home birthing became like the only legitimate option that wouldn't put us sure. in bankruptcy. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's so much more affordable. And I came at it from a different perspective where my mother was treated horribly in hospital births. And I am not saying that is how all hospital nurses, doctors, practitioners are, but she had particularly traumatic hospital births. Um, her mother, my mother, my sister, myself, there is something in our family. We have weird labors. We have long labors. They do not match any kind of realm of normal. And so my mom was always just pumped, so full of Pitocin. It wasn't enough to force her, you know, cervix to dilate. And it was just, it was just horrible. It was really, she called it like the taking of her dignity. And so I think it was so healing for her to watch me. She was present at the home birth of both of my girls, but especially that first one as it drug on and on, because it's just how we labor. Just to see me so respected and cared for by these really amazing midwives. I think it was a great, um, a great thing for her. And I actually think that really is very Catholic, you know, to recognize that dignity of the mother um, in birth and everything and to listen and respect. It was, it was really beautiful. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Cause if you don't, again, if you, you have to kind of, they prepare for a cookie cutter type of experience. Mm-hmm. And they, they kind of have to because the volume is coming through. Sure. But if you have that midwife, it is a much more intimate, uh, personalized mm-hmm. experience, which is, mm-hmm. which is cool. So you were well into the crunchy, natural life at that point? Or were you, as you're giving birth for the first time and at home or... Was this- oh, I was definitely into it. So um, from about ages 18 to 22 was when I just kind of dove all in. My interest in birth, interest in real food. Um, I used to go grocery shopping when a Trader Joe's opened up about 30 <laughs> minutes away from where I was in Idaho. I'd go grocery shopping every couple of weeks and take lists for these real crunchy mom friends of mine who had six kids. And I would go grab things for them so they didn't have to go. And I started watching what they were eating. And it, it got me so interested in how we can, you know, fuel our bodies better and take care of, of ourselves really as temples of the Holy Ghost. So no, by the time I was 25 and giving birth, this was just like my world. Um, and uh, and so yeah, yeah that's, that's where I was coming at it from at that point. Yeah, so I gotta say, so the the lifestyle that I had grown up in, it became progressively more new age as uh, I got into my teens. The okay. household just became more, yeah, <laughs> woo woo spiritual stuff. Okay. So it seemed like, and you know, you go to uh, any of the natural stores, and there's you know the yoga magazines, and mm-hmm. everything is just like it's it has it's infused with an Eastern religion uh, type of. Uh, theme or foundation Absolutely. for all of this stuff is is more Eastern religion, and that is um, more sophisticated and uh, a more intelligent way to live. And I love that you just said, you know, that 
we're temples of the Holy Ghost. So it's not, it, this isn't just a way to align your chakras or, <laughs> you yeah. know, and stuff I used to believe or get, you know, dreams that uh-huh. make sense and come true. You know, I told, mm-hmm. I used to be that person. Yeah. So I, I say this, you know, kind of, I know, I know where the- <laughs> Yes. I can if you look myself. at it, if you want to really look at things that we kind of as Catholics, especially conservative or traditional Catholics, they are just like, they want to have a 10 foot pole when you hear anything like words like herbal or oils. <laughs> They're just like, no, this is new age evil. But if you look at history, like the Catholic Church and our saints and things, we've been doing herbs and oils and using what God has given us for a long time. If you Google monastic herbalism, you will learn about these monks during the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, and they were masters at healing things naturally. And um, Charlemagne, you know, like he actually insisted that these plant gardens be planted all throughout his empire so that these... Um, these monks, these Benedictine monks could grow these herbs and make these tinctures and things. And St. Hildegard of Bingen was a 12th century mystic. And she is, you know, highly revered in the church. And she was an herbalist. And we still use herbal treatments she, you know, has to this day. So it's very, like, in line with history and the faith to do natural things. Because God wouldn't have abandoned all of mankind not to have any remedies or potential things to help and heal their bodies or support their bodies until like modern medicine began with the industrial revolution. <laughs> um, you know, That's but sometimes we point. kind of yeah. put blinders on, like it's just us that has medicine and no one else had anything in the past. And that's really not the case. Right. You know, I love, I, I can't remember what episode it was. I mean, we, we like to watch old <clears throat> mother Angelica episodes okay, nice. on, yeah, on YouTube. <laughs> and each time actually, if I can't fall asleep, she's so soothing. She actually, for whatever reason, she looks, She's a doppelganger of my husband's grandmother nice. and her personality. It's like looking at granny on the screen. But she, it was so funny. One episode, a woman called in and she was having some kind of troubles and she needed, she wanted Mother Angelica's advice. And she just straight out asked her if she was using herbs. <laughs> like, have you looked into using herbs? Herbs are very helpful for whatever the problem was. I was like, wow, you, you wouldn't expect to hear that because you just think, you know, yeah, it's right. Blinders. Like, mm-hmm. oh, no, nothing, nothing else, just modern medicine, Western mm-hmm. lifestyle here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that stems from, uh, you know, the 60s revolution, the sexual revolution, everything went haywire. And in this process, they happened to adopt and cling to a lot of natural practices um, because it appealed to them at the time when they were trying to like throw off the patriarchy and all this stuff. Um, We're going to get back to our roots. And so I think that we really associate all of the whole foods yoga esque. um, They have sage there now to burn and smudge and everything else and crystals and stuff that all kind of stems from that. So then I think that we say, well, anything natural, Ooh, that's, that's, that's bad. You know, this is associated with the new age movement just because I think the sixties revolution were so anxious to go like pre sixties, um, as Catholics, as far as, you know, culture and stuff that then we, we've let them take over what's really our heritage, which is, you know, using what God has given us if we can, um, first, you know, before resorting to things that might have, um, you know, like, some Western medicine has really serious side effects and things. I'm not saying that there's not a place for it. Um, but God's given us a lot we can do ourselves before we have to resort to that oftentimes. Um, so, yeah. yeah. That is really interesting. And it's so, it's funny though, because you think that the way, um, yeah, the way it's all presented is they have a claim on it. It, it doesn't go, it, it just belongs to these people who are, attuned to a, a higher spirituality when in fact it's been used for hundreds and thousands of years. And it's, it is cool. Like you said, like you, you can res- not resort, but it may be an escalating. You start at with the most natural thing possible mm-hmm. and see if that works. If, if, you know, time allows, you wouldn't do this if you have like acute care. care. <laughs> yeah. Like you need something done immediately. <laughs> yes. And so yeah, it, it is tr- uh, a struggle for me at times when I, s- the, that balance between, because I, I, I really just don't like going to the doctors for anything, and I'll, I'll mm-hmm. explain away all of it. Like, oh, herbs, that'll work. <laughs> and then sometimes, you know, I had pneumonia uh, a few months ago, and it probably would not have become pneumonia if I'd just gone to the doctor a little mm-hmm. <laughs> earlier. But um, one of my aunts had, she had since passed away, but she was really a new age spiritual type person, believed that kind of Eastern spirituality and 
herbs were going to fix everything and um and wound up just being completely in denial of the fact that she was getting breast cancer and it was really really oh, bad that's so, and so sad. she like had to buy a bigger bra because it, the the lumps were getting so big <laughs> she was insane but she just she was you know denial and then just so all in on natural stuff that she there, there needs to be a balance in all these things because God gave us modern medicine as well. So sure, sure. My sister who was born one missing a heart valve, other. she's grateful for, you know, yeah, and being able important. to have triple open heart surgery that she's had twice. You know, there's absolutely cases for smaller ailments, big things. And even when you want to go back to birth, there's absolutely a case for C-sections. I was a necessary C-section. My umbilical cord was wrapped around me so many times. I could not physically descend into the birth canal. Um, so there's absolutely a reason to have C-sections, but are they happening at a rate that is healthy in our nation? Absolutely not. We are over double what the World right. Health Organization recommends. So should there be C-sections? Of course. Sometimes I think people think, oh, you home birthers, you just think that you know a woman should die over not being able to have a natural <laughs> birth. And it's like, no, I want all babies to be healthy. But you know, I also don't want women to have to undergo major surgery if it's unnecessary, because we're not looking at each woman and her situation and, you know, her value, her dignity, what her body's doing, and maybe forcing things just for convenience, for money, um, yeah. you know, speeding people through and everything. Um, so Absolutely. I think that all comes into play. Yeah, there should be. Yeah, they, whether whatever direction uh, you're going in or if it's, um, if it's a, a combination of more natural care and mm-hmm. um, modern medicine, you know, combined, it should be looked at as what is the the safest, healthiest, and um, you know least costly you know to my health or to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but it's yeah, looking at the whole there. person. You know, um, it's very common. My daughter, she has off and on for a few years struggled with eczema, and we oddly had a flare after months of it just being completely gone, and we went to a doctor. And he is a very good Catholic man and everything, but man, he didn't hardly look at her. He didn't ask about anything about her. He just threw me a prescription for some, you know, pharmaceutical drug that might be linked to less inflammation and like no information on it. And it's like, man, that didn't look at her you know, her whole history, her medical needs, um, you know, root causes, any of that. So I think that the more holistic natural community does a much better job about looking at each person individually. Um, but it is very frustrating on the same token, though, that there's a lot of new age stuff that can get mixed in when you start looking at, you know, natural healing or alternative medicine. Right. And you really have to be diligent as a Catholic to make sure it's not touching into energy medicine and all kinds of stuff that isn't okay. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, you'd think with a doctor who is Catholic, right, and holistic medicine, it all should combine very beautifully because Catholics do look at the dignity of each person. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it should all align perfectly. It just, it, just doesn't or hasn't on the mainstream um, or the main scale, large scale. That's what I'm trying to say. The large scale. Uh, and again, it is just the amount of people who are getting going through um, and just the general lack of health that's in our nation anyway, that mm-hmm. so many people have to go to the doctors. So true. And I think something else too, um, you can listen to Jim Gaffigan. I don't know if you've ever heard him. He has a joke about home birth, you know, and he says, and don't worry, we had a midwife because we believe in witchcraft (laughs) because (laughs) there really was though in, in the early 1900s when like hospital birth was becoming more common, there was like kind of a witch hunt on midwives in America. And there was all kinds of publications that really um, were degrading and it made them out to look like these dirty Dirty backwoods, which is essentially in hospital birth, was really clean and it was the proper place to be. And I think some of those attitudes against midwives and their knowledge of herbs and medicine, their knowledge of birth, it was really kind of devalued and degraded. And I think it still kind of clings in our culture and modern medicine and the system, our healthcare system now, as kind of being just skeptical of that, because it's still, I think, associated with this idea of, um, you know, just kind of, well, backwoods and, you know, we're so much more advanced now, that whole kind sure. of thing. Yeah. Well, there, I mean, breastfeeding had a, a very poor image for a long time. And oh, that's, yes, definitely. That's, yeah. We're coming out of the, the weeds there with that. So hopefully with 
midwives. I didn't realize, you know, when I had gone from the hospital experience to a birth center, I, a few people were, you know, expressed some concern that it was a midwife. But then when I said, oh, you know, there's a nurse there and I'm across the street from the hospital, I was like, oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And then when I said that, I was, oh, where are you delivering? Like, in at home, in my bed? Uh-huh. <laughs> I people just looked so mortified and frightened. I remember an older gentleman was like, like, oh, oh, are you sure about this? What happens if there's an emergency? I mean, that was the first thing is what hospital are you going to if there's an emergency? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I am low risk. I mean, that's not a guarantee mm-hmm. for anything, but I have done my research. And it's if you are living a natural, more natural life, you do wind up having to do a lot of research. Mm-hmm. Not to say, I mean, you can be very lazy about it too and be like, you know, oh, uh, I'll, I'll pick this because of, you know, the nice marketing and the label on it. It looks, mm-hmm. looks good and healthy and it's actually not. The green washing. That's right. Yeah. Um, but you, you do wind up doing more research and you can be a, a much more a savvy and knowledgeable consumer, mm-hmm. which to bring everyone else out of just the blind consumerism when it comes to what they're eating or putting on their bodies or in their households, uh, Mm -hmm. you need to do more research and and force companies in in that way to um, uh, be better. (laughs) And I think that we need to really encourage moms. I actually have a blog post on my blog called something like New Parents Research What Matters because I find that there is so much emphasis in our culture about like strollers and pack and plays and car seats and all the emphasis is in that. But when I was a first time mom, knowing what I wanted, I was really discounted or made fun of or eyes were rolled when you talk about birth books you might be reading or anything related to parenting and stuff. It's kind of like uh, it, it's just seen as like naive and silly and, oh, the hospital's going to take care of that or whatever. I think we're so eager to hand over our our decisions, our health, everything over to the quote unquote professionals. I'm not saying that they don't have, you know, a ton of knowledge I don't have about things and that you don't rely on them in emergency situations, especially. But just there is this kind of air, especially I think towards new parents. That's a little demeaning kind of like, yeah. You can't really figure anything out till you've done it. But it's like almost everything I researched and stuff, I ended up doing. Not quite, but it's still worth it to take our health and our family and our medical care into our old ha- our own hands and at least make sure that we're making informed decisions, even if things don't go to plan as we would want. Sure, but we should be accountable for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that oftentimes, once you start doing the research on what is best for you will will probably lead you in a more natural path anyway. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, or, or at least finding really respectful practitioners if you do need to do a more allopathic, modern medical you know, sure. solution. You to, to find practitioners that really respect you and walk with you, yeah. um, I think is really important. So do you have then any uh, advice on how parents, if they're not, or they're interested about natural stuff, but they're kind of just dipping their toes in, what they can do to get started? That is so tricky. I would first start with just reading your food labels. And if there's something you don't know what it is, just start researching it. I think what we consume in our bodies is probably the biggest thing to start with. Um, And so, yeah, read your food labels. A great book, if you really want to see like a lot on natural living, it's called Nourishing Traditions. And it's written by Sally Fallon. And it's all based on Dr. Weston A. Price. He was a Cleveland dentist, actually, who studied all kinds of um, uh, different uh, groups of people, um, like Aboriginal people and things. And he saw like how they took care of their health. And it kind of just looks at the modern American diet, how foods were traditionally prepared, a lot on labels. It's something really, really great. I think Nourishing Traditions has a lot for everyone. And that book really helped me a lot. Um, but yeah, just read your labels and just ask questions. We have Google at our fingertips. And even though there's a lot of crazy information out there, there's a lot of really great stuff you can find too. And then, of course, you have your website that people can go and peruse. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm at the naturalcatholicmom.com. And actually on YouTube, if you just type in Mama Natural, she has a great YouTube channel with lots of basic quick videos um, that I found really helpful. And her stuff is very well researched. Cool. Now, there's one thing that I do not do, and that is cloth diapering. I am very intimidated okay. by it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Do you do you use liners in the cloth diapers? So I for use ease of- one system exclusively, and it's a okay. brand called Grovia, and they have the most amazing diaper. There's no other brand like it, and their liners. 
instead of like having to fold them up or instead of stuffing them into pockets, they are just pre-folded, sewn in place, and you just use snaps to snap them into the outer shell. And so when the diaper is dirty, you rip off this liner that snapped in and put it, snap a new one in. And they are incredible. They were worth every penny. I have cloth diaper now for four and a half solid years. And uh, um, I have a whole series of that on my blog too. We had a Cadillac cloth diaper stash, we say, but if you buy enough of them and you get really good quality ones and from one brand, so you're not like constantly mixing and matching, I think it makes it so much less intimidating. Um, So yeah, we've enjoyed cloth diapering. It saved us a ton of money. We put in probably about $900 into our stash, um, but we've cloth diapered every day for four and a half years for 900 bucks, which (laughs) is pretty good. Yeah, I'm I'm just thinking about doing the math right now. And I know that, uh, yep, I spent more than that. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, because I I spend about, I would say, uh, yeah, probably about $1,000 or more a year on diapers. Yep. Yeah, and I've had two in diapers at once. So people are oftentimes like kind of blown away, like that we invested so many hundreds of dollars at once, but oh, it just keeps paying for itself. It's so great. (laughs) That's very cool. Okay, I'm going to look at that blog post of yours. Okay. (laughs) Because I was watching, um, we go on Tuesdays, I take my oldest son and then my four-year-old daughter has kind of jumped in on this too, to a Catholic co-op for a couple hours and the little kids just play on one end of their, in one room and then the the older kids get split out. But there is one woman there that does cloth diapering and she's the only one that I've actually seen in close proximity to myself. (laughs) I have not You found her in the wild. I know I did. I found her in the wild and I, she's actually one of the, the teachers for the kids. So I haven't gotten a chance to sit, like pull her aside and ask her, how do you get started on this? Mm. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. So I can go look it up now. Yeah. Yeah. No, cloth diapering has been great. And it actually, I think really facilitates uh, potty learning easier later because they can feel when they're wet and um, you don't have any weird chemicals. If you have any skin issues, cloth diapering is very oftentimes helpful for that because um, little baby butts sometimes don't like what's in disposables. So. Yeah. Yeah. I know I've seen the, I think we did honest diapers for a while when my six year old was first born. And I remember seeing like the little commercials about what's in the disposable diapers Mm -hmm. you know, the, the average ones are like, Ooh, but (laughs) (laughs) again, I was completely unprepared for having a baby at the time. So I just kind of did what was easiest. Sure. Well, we all learn along the way. We're all learning as we go and we all make compromises. I make compromises a lot of the time just because of money for something, especially with food. I think we're all just doing the best we can, but taking responsibility and owning things and doing the best we can, I think is, is really good for our health, even if we can't do it perfectly. Uh, that is wonderful advice. Thank you for saying that. That's perfect. And I actually, I don't even know if I can uh, add on to that because that was, that was great a way to end. So, <laughs> um, so we can find uh, Mariette at the Catholic, oh, sorry, the natural Catholic And mm-hmm. then um, I will also in the show notes, I'll put the link uh, to your site on the show notes. And then uh, I'll put the link to the, the blog post that you've mentioned okay. as well. So that anybody who's listening can just, if you're interested, click on those. And uh, thank you, Mariette, so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. God bless you. All right. Until next time, everyone. Don't forget to head over to thecatholicmama.com to get your free copy of How to Talk to Your Kids About God. This handy little ebook will teach you how to broach the topic of God with your children or how to respond to your kids when they want to talk about God, as well as give you answers to seven of the trickiest questions about the faith that Christian parents face. You'll love the easy-to-understand grown-up answers, the pared-down but not talked-down answers you can share with your kids, plus recommended resources if you'd like to deepen your understanding of the topic. Get yours free at thecatholicmama.com. Hi, everybody. This is Al Belowski, host of Catholic Mysticism and All Things Catholic. You know, we have such a beautiful, vibrant faith, and I want to introduce you to it. And what we do on the show is we talk about the supernatural. We talk about a prayer life. We talk about the battle that's waged between good and evil. We talk about Satan, and we talk about God and the battle that they 
have begun for our souls. And we talk about our brothers and sisters, the saints. And we want to get you into this wonderful supernatural aspect of our faith, where we talk about miracles of the Eucharist, where we talk about Our Lady's apparitions of Fatima and Lourdes. And we can let our souls be nourished with this and continue to grow closer to our Lord in holiness. And by our brothers and sisters that have gone before us, the saints, that we tap into their lives and talk about them and the challenges that are so relevant today in our world as it was for them. And we use this to become closer and closer to our Lord because we are spiritual beings and he has given us this great gift of his church to nourish us with his sacraments, especially in the Eucharist and confession and confirmation and all the beautiful things of our faith that lead us closer and closer to him. So I hope you'll tune in for Catholic mysticism where we will try, you and I, together to grow closer through the Holy Spirit to our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.